Hello everyone. Here we are south of Dawsonville, Georgia at the very site where an above ground unshielded nuclear reactor operated from the late 50s to the early 70s. This is at the Georgia Nuclear Aircraft Test Laboratory. Here different materials were irradiated and then tested for their durability or strength for use in a nuclear aircraft project. Here's a little sketch of the facility. We were standing right where the reactor was. To the left are tunnels with control rooms and to the right is the train storage yard. Now we've walked about a couple hundred yards to the left across the field. Now we're going into the woods here and you can start seeing some structures. I'm not sure what those concrete blocks are, but up ahead is something interesting. Right there is the entrance to the tunnels. They go five stories down and that's where the control rooms were that controlled the reactor because the people needed to be protected while the reactor was running above the ground. They've sealed it up with dirt to keep people from coming in, but people dig their way in and explore in there sometimes. I've got a link to one of the videos that shows that. I would not recommend doing it, and if you do dig anywhere around here, bring a Geiger counter with you, seriously. All right, now we're flying above the field where the reactor was. The reactor was about two thirds of the way up as best as I can tell. Looking down there, that red dirt is exactly where that tunnel entrance was that we were climbing on. By the way, this area has been kept a field for a reason. It would be all overgrown with trees if left alone. They're doing that so you don't have any deep roots from trees bringing up any radioactivity from underneath. We're right over where the reactor was. Further up ahead is where the train storage shed was. And look at that concrete thing on the right, which is right here. Not sure what it's for, but it's near the train area. Here's a wall that I've read is a shielding wall to shield a storage water tank from the reactor radiation. And back in here is the foundation for the train storage yard. They used the train to bring the radioactive material that they irradiated over to the test labs. Here's more foundations. And some more foundations. So this is where they kept the train. All right, back in the air, we're flying right over where we were just walking. And then next, we're gonna come up on the upper part of the map above where the train's house is. 
So above the train house, you see you have those three different paths coming out of the sides. And here we are at one of them. So this is the one on the left, if you're looking down from the top of the map. Over there is the one on the right. And then the one in the middle joins into the one on the right. And then they join together. And then that would continue as the railroad there. So now we're back flying right above those same places where the three train tracks came out from the train storage area. We're going to turn around and look back at it. So you see the one on the left and the right with the orange dirt and then the one in the middle taps into the one on the right and you can't really see it well because of the foliage. But right there is that little area and then right where we're looking is where the train storage area would be and then further up towards that field is where the reactor was. So those tracks all tied into this thing right here, which used to be a railroad track. It's now a walking or biking or horse path. You can't take vehicles here. So this was about a two mile or so railroad that would take the materials that were irradiated, drop them off for a little while in an area to cool them down a little bit to make them less radioactive, and then eventually take them to the hot cell area where they would work on them through thick concrete and glass. They're basically trying to find out what materials would work in a nuclear aircraft. So this reactor was not going to be in the aircraft. This was just testing out materials to see if they would dissolve or fall apart with the high levels of radiation. The actual prototypes of those reactors that would have been in the aircraft are out there in the Idaho desert near Arco right by the experimental breeder reactor one. This program was moving along until 1961 when President Kennedy canceled it because really there was, even though the engineering problems could have been solved, there was a ton of operational problems with a nuclear reactor on an aircraft. Crashes, crew health, and you really don't need to have an airplane in the sky for two weeks when you have the speed that you have. Okay, so we flew about halfway of that two mile train track that gets you to this bridge going over the Itoa River. Now a couple hundred yards from that spot and it's a little different than what the map depicts but I'm pretty sure this is the right location back in here is the cooling off area where you would take the irradiated material and just let it sit here for a while to radioactively decay somewhat make it a little easier to handle later if you see back here some of the trees are cut down and not allowed to grow real tall which is another clue that this is that area Now back another quarter mile down the road from that spot. Here's where the administrative buildings were. And then here is the hot cell facility that you see in concrete behind that fence. So that's the facility where they would bring in the irradiated materials, put them in special rooms, and then people would manipulate them with little robot manipulators through super thick special glass and concrete. I've got a link to a 1959 video that shows this and shows the reactor and a bunch of other cool stuff. Doesn't show the train however. There's another shot of the hot cell and another picture of it. It's probably a little bit radioactive inside still which is the main reason that it was not torn down.
And I do not advise breaking in there or anything else digging around, especially without a Geiger counter. Now we're flying right above this hot cell. Looking around, these are the parking areas where people come here and ride horseback now. There's leftover foundations for administrative buildings and things like that. Most people out here riding don't even know about the history. They kind of look at you funny when you mention it. <laughs> so there's the top of the hot cell building with a hole in the roof. Let's go down and take a closer look at it. So this place stopped testing items for the nuclear aircraft program in 61, but it kept operating for 10 more years. And there's all kinds of different theories as to what this reactor was up to during those years. And we won't be able to see inside that hole, of course, because of the lighting. But I'm not sure it's a good idea to have rain pouring into there. Cool drone shadow picture there. So there's a couple links in the comments to a couple of videos. So check those out or just search Georgia Nuclear Aircraft Laboratory in Google or YouTube. There's a lot of resources, including directions how to get here. I hope you enjoyed this look at a not so well known piece of Georgia history, not very far at all from Atlanta. Thanks for watching, everybody.